Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. In the last episode, we went to the bottom of the Water Shrine, where we took on the evil Kraken, and we brought light to the third orb. Also, since we picked up the slab while we were down there, we can come back to Melmont and talk to Dr. Une, who will teach us how to speak Lafinish, or Lafinish, or Lafinish. I don't really know how to pronounce it, so I'm going to call it Lafinish. And since we know how to speak it now, or at least understand it at the very least, we can head over to the town of Lafine and figure out where to go to next. So if you hop in our airship and head north a little bit until we get to about here, take an eastward turn, we should come across a chunk of land. If I'm not making things up, not that chunk. Should be another one soon. And there it is. This is the town of Lafine. Unfortunately, it's one of the ones where there's nowhere to land nearby, so you have to go all the way up here. Yeah, that's right, all the way over here. And walk. Fortunately, the enemies here are ones we've already seen at the Power Peninsula, so you should be more than capable to take them on. And actually, they still give pretty decent experience points. So if you're lagging behind in levels, this probably wouldn't be a bad area to catch up. Especially since we have the Light Axes and the Mage Staff, so you can use Harm 2 and Fire 2 as often as you want without having to worry about spell charges and going back to ends the whole- I'm not gonna worry about leveling up anymore at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident, but I might have to grind a little bit as we get closer to the end of the game. But as you can see, we are at the town of Lafine. So let's see what they have to say. And apparently, only their bravest become Sky Warriors and that her airship was theirs to begin with. Uh, they don't ask for it back, so I'm not going to offer, <laughs> just because we still need it. Uh, we talked to him, or her, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, apparently 400 years ago, they experienced destruction, and uh, the legend of the warriors with the orbs began. And, uh, yep, yeah, that's us, so apparently we're here to save the day. And, yep, yeah, that guy seems pretty excited. There's no weapon shops, or armor shops, or even item shops for that matter here. Uh, pretty much the information that you get is what's most important. And apparently 400 years ago, they controlled the wind and they suspended a castle in the air, which is pretty impressive. And their interest was the universe, which is a pretty broad interest. I mean, that involves like cooking and gardening and everything. And this guy's just being a pain in the butt. And apparently their memories are starting to fade. Well, that happens if you don't write them down. And uh, apparently the castle is among the stars, or seemingly among the stars. Story, sorry, that's different. We talked to him. Apparently the robots were their servants or comrades or they belonged to them at some point. So the one that we saw at the waterfall probably belonged to them as well. And more and more, their story is reminding me of a, a movie called Laputa Castle in the Sky, which is a fantastic movie and if you haven't seen it, definitely recommend checking it out just because it really is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. We talked to him. Apparently the Mirage Tower is the entrance to the floating castle, which uh, was briefly mentioned before. It's in the desert to the west of here, and in order to get inside of it, we need to know the Lafinish song, so maybe one of the people here will teach it to us. That's not a bit of a stretch, no? Talk to him, her. The last five warriors left to find the cause of the world's decay, but uh, they return to bats, which is kind of weird. And I don't know if you can actually find them. There's a lot of bats in this game, so maybe not. And apparently the power wind was taken by Tiamat, which is the final fiend, obviously the wind fiend. And uh, they tried fighting him before, but they were unsuccessful. Uh, let's talk to this person first, I guess. And they teach us the chime, which is the song that we need to get into the Mirage Tower, which is pretty good, because that's where we need to go to next. And yeah, the five bravest warriors never returned. Now, before we go to the Mirage Tower, if we go over here, if this guy, oh my god, are you serious, dude? Come on, come on, come on, there we go, you can actually come over here, that was really annoying, and you can find some really weird looking magic shops, I don't know why there's hearts here, they're not actually clinics, so you can't resurrect people, well, well actually, oh ho, oh ho, I get it, I just got this, I can't believe I never got this before. If you go to the white magic shop, there's life too, so you can revive people. Ah, oh, it makes so much sense now. Uh, so you definitely want to pick this up for your white wizard. Resurrects your character and brings them back to full hit points, as opposed to just one when you're using life one. Uh, if you go to the black magic shop, 
This has the strongest black magic spell in the game, not surprising. It's called Nuke. It is awesome. Unfortunately, only black wizards can learn it, so red wizards cannot. So I won't be able to buy it or even show it off in this Let's Play, which is kind of unfortunate. But now that we're done here, let's head over to the Mirage Tower. And, ooh, what's going on? There we go. So I'm gonna make my way to the airship, and then from there on, we'll go to the Mirage Tower. Now that we're back at the airship, let's hop in and head to the Mirage Tower. It's actually right here. It's not that far to go, so... In order to get to it, we can't land on the desert, obviously. We need to land on this patch of grass. Now, the enemies here, we've seen them before. Nothing to worry about too much. There are also a couple new ones, but uh, really, they're not that powerful. So let's just head into the Mirage Tower. Welcome to the Mirage Tower. This place is pretty cool in that there's a lot of treasure and it's usually concentrated towards the middle of the rooms. And then to get to the next level, you need to go along the perimeter of the room. Uh, there's a lot of fantastic treasure to pick up here. So much so that you're actually going to be throwing some of it away and some of the armor that you have now. Uh, there's a couple of tough decisions on that could go either way depending on how you want to play the game. So don't take what I say as it being absolute. Use your kind of judgment as to what you want to keep, uh, what you think is more useful, because obviously opinions are going to differ. But let's go get that treasure. First off, head over here. As you can see, there's already quite a few chests in the middle. And hopefully we won't come across too many tough enemies. We got a cabin. There's also a lot of enemies we've seen before. You remember the vampire from the Earth Cave? You can actually come across lots of them, up to nine I think, which is pretty weird. But uh, they're really not that difficult, because remember, we kill that one in one hit, so yeah. Here we have the Aegis Shield, which is a really good shield to have. It protects the fighter, or rather the knight, from poison, from stone, so it's kind of like a ribbon, but it also gives you pretty good absorb, so you want to have that. Um, at this point, probably drop the Opal Shield. I know it feels like you can sell it, but honestly, we don't need money at this point. We never will. Well. There are a couple spells I'm going to pick up along the way, but really, we have so much gold that we're not going to worry about selling items to get it. We're also going to find a lot of it in chests here too, so there's some gold here, more gold here. We have a Vorpal, which is a weapon. Not a very good weapon, so either toss it. Oh, we have some new enemies here. We have the Badman. And uh, when I was younger, I had a hard time pronouncing Badman, I don't know why. So I used to call them Batman. Which kind of makes sense because they kind of look like Batman. They got like the little bat ears and like a cape. You can kind of see his sort of belt there. And they're even throwing the batarang. So maybe it is Batman. Maybe it's a mistranslation. Uh, nothing to worry about. They're pretty vanilla. They just do normal physical attacks. They have a, a counterpart later on, which I won't talk about too much now. But they're much, much more difficult, a lot scarier. Hopefully, we won't come across too many of them. And yeah, these things are barely touching me. 11 damage, pfft, that's nothing. It's not even worth using a cure potion. Not a cure potion, heal potion, rather. And if we come over here, we have one more chest to pick up here. More gold. This one has a heal helmet, which is a really interesting item. If you use it in battle, obviously it casts heal. I know a lot of people like to have it on their fighter. It has lower absorb than the opal helmet, but being able to heal on your knight is pretty cool. Personally, I don't like to use it. I'm going to hold on to it for now, but really, I see myself kind of tossing it later on. And in here, we have some gold. So we've gotten all the treasure on this level, so we want to go back to the entrance. I'm just going to use exit. It's a bit of a shortcut. Not cure 3. There we go. Because you actually don't have to go around the perimeter here. You just go through the door, go through the door again, and you're already on the next level. This place is a little bit more involved. You actually have to walk around it quite a few times. And we have a new enemy, the Catman. These things can poison you with their physical attacks, and I believe they're weak to fire. And, oh, look at that. All right, okay. Even though we have the ribbons, which protects us from status ailments, it's not 100% guaranteed. I think it like reduces the chance by 50% or something. I don't know the exact numbers. But yeah, don't think that just by having the ribbons you're immune to everything. Uh, you still have a chance of getting poison and whatnot. So make sure you have pure potions throughout the rest of the game. And I don't even know if I have enough. 
I might have not bought any since God knows when. But yeah, other than that, Catmans really don't have to worry too much about them. They do ridiculously low damage. They don't even look like cats, they look like bears or something. So I'm gonna heal up, use some pure potions, and I'll meet you in a bit. And luckily I did have some pure potions, so we're good. Uh, this place here, there's a center room with a lot of treasure in it, so we're gonna make our way there. And... oh, look, there's a robot. A blue robot with a white top. That's kinda cool. I like that design. Good job. Good job, art person. And here we have a new enemy, the guards. These things are pretty cool, they're kind of like a little mechanized monster. Uh, obviously, they're weak to lightning damage. They're not too tough, they do like, what, 17 damage to hope, which is nothing really. Uh, they don't have good attack, they don't have a lot of hit points, they can paralyze you, which is a little bit annoying, but really, take them out as quickly as possible. Shouldn't give you too many problems. And voila, there's one dead. Pancakes paralyzed, which is kind of annoying, but what can you do? Good old Zeus Gauntlet doing ridiculous damage. And come on, one more hit. Missed. And there we go. I think these things give pretty good experience. Eh, about a thousand, it's not too bad. But if we continue down this way, we can make it to the central room. There's the staircase there, we'll have to go back up in a second. But really, the treasure is what I'm really after. And as you can see, there is a lot of treasure in here. And I really like the uh, computers, or I don't even know what that is. I think it's computers on the side there. Kind of a neat little feature. So let's start here. We have the dragon armor, which is a really good piece of armor to have for your knight. Just because it protects you from fire damage, ice damage, and lightning damage. So definitely put that on your knight. I'm going to have to drop the opal armor, which is kind of a sad thing to do, but it has to happen. Just because there's going to be a couple items here that we're going to be pecking up anyways. Uh, 10,000 gold. The sun sword, which is a slight upgrade for your fighter. I keep calling it a fighter, really it's a knight. So you want to equip that on. Uh, your hit percentage will go down a little bit, but your damage will go up. But what this lets you do is free up the defense sword for your red wizard, which is a pretty good upgrade. Uh, if we go here, we have some more gold. We have a house. And here we have some more gold. More gold. Let me guess, more gold. No, we have the Thor hammer. Okay. This is the best hammer for the white mage. It's a pretty good weapon. If you use it in battle, it lets you cast lightning too, which is pretty useful. Uh, because it lets you do that, you can actually give the Zeus gauntlet to... Lexa. I'm actually going to drop the buckler. It doesn't really add that much absorb. If you give it to your red wizard, it lets you cast lightning too without using any spell charges. Pretty useful. Uh, where was I? More gold. And more gold. So, some pretty good items there. And we have a new enemy, the Chimera. This thing is pretty interesting. It looks like some sort of lion eating a dragon head and it's got wings. Yeah. I don't even know what's going on there. They like to use Cremate, which is a fire-based attack. So I think they're either weak to ice or lightning. Don't really know for sure. But other than that, you don't really need to worry too much about them. They go down pretty quickly. They give a good experience. If you came across four, that'd be pretty good. But now that we're down, done here, we can actually go to the staircase. Hopefully we won't come into any other battles, fingers crossed. Oh, might be close, might be close. Dang, that was really close. But let's talk to him first. And uh, one of them escaped to the west. Talks about a cube, we've already done that. Which is uh, pretty fortunate. If we had to go back and get it now, it'd be pretty annoying. We have a room here. So let's go and check out what's inside. I think there's something important here, and yes there is. We have a fixed encounter with a blue dragon! This thing is pretty intimidating. It can do some pretty wicked damage to you, so take it out as quickly as possible. I'm going to... Yeah, I'll use the Zeus Gauntlet. And I'll use the... No, wait, hang on. It's not weak to lightning. It's weak to... Can't remember now. It likes to cast lightning, so I'm assuming it's weak to ice. So I'm going to use 
lightning damage. Wow, 120. Oof. That was pretty crazy damage. Uh, fortunately, there's only one of them, so you should be able to take it out pretty quickly. Yes, thank goodness. It can cast Thunder, which will do like 80 damage minimum to your characters, even with the ribbon and whatnot on. We talked to him. This, apparently this is a transporter and requires a cube to operate. Fortunately, we have one, so let's go. So now, we are now in the Sky Castle, as you can tell. It's kind of futuristic. There's stars in the background. So in the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1, we're going to go throughout the Sky Castle, pick up some treasure, and see what dangers await us. Until then, my name is Paper Napkin. Take it easy, folks.